This time it's five 1970s mopeds. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Now the moped was originally intended to bridge that halfway between a bicycle and a motorcycle, hence 50cc engine and pedals, and essentially it filled in the gap that had been left behind by the autocycles of the early 1950s. Various companies in Japan and Europe produced these little bikes during the early and mid 70s. However, despite these little bikes having a sub 50cc capacity, their performance was such that the British government felt they needed to rein them in a bit. So in 77 they were restricted to 30 miles an hour and the bicycle pedals were deleted as they were seen by this point as completely pointless. Here we have examples of five mopeds from the 1970s. The Zunda KS50 in its day, Zunda was one of Germany's largest motorcycle producers. It was founded in 1917 in Nuremberg by Fritz Niermeyer, along with backing for the mighty Krupp concern. Before the Second World War, Zunda was best known for producing flat twins rather like BMWs. But after World War II, the company reconcentrated and produced a range of two-strip machines of various sizes, the Zunda Bella Scooter being one of their most popular post-war designs. The KS50 first appeared in the early 60s and would evolve throughout its life, gradually gaining 5 speeds and right at the very end even being water cooled. The KS was a well made machine, this made it quite expensive so it wasn't a common sight at all on the British market where it was drastically undercut by the likes of Yamaha and Suzuki. It was nevertheless a very fine machine and in fact was even used as the basis for Laverda's small machines. Unfortunately, Zondat was never as powerful as it had been before World War II. This meant they didn't really have the finances to compete against the Japanese onslaught. And unfortunately, in 1982, Zondat would be forced to declare bankruptcy. But after bankruptcy, the entire production line and all intellectual properties were bought by Zhengdu Motor Company, a Chinese-based corporation. They would continue to produce Zondat motorcycles from 1987 until the early 90s. Zundep itself is still in business, but makes small four-stroke Hondas and electric mopeds. The Yamaha FS1 The Yamaha FS1, affectionately known as the Fizzy, was in the UK known as the FS1E. Early versions featured pedals that could be locked into position. Later versions, the pedals were deleted because they were no longer required by law. This little 49cc beast was the must-have bike for 16-year-olds back in the 1970s and in many ways still is today, commanding eye-watering prices for what is a humble moped. Early models are good for up to 50 miles an hour. Later ones, of course, are restricted down to 31 miles an hour. A lot of tuning parts are available then and now, which can push top speed way beyond that, sometimes just over 60 miles an hour, although I dread to think just how long the crank would survive that kind of treatment. Today in the UK the bike has become truly iconic and you can expect to spend well over five grand for a mint one. This also means there's a healthy industry in the restoration and keeping these bikes on the road and of course tuning them. The eye-watering asking price can seem insane to people who don't really understand what these bikes are about. But for some people the nostalgia kick alone is more than enough to justify the asking price. Early versions used a drum brake very late models used a disc brake at the front. Either way, stopping power is fairly mediocre, but those very narrow little tyres will grip the road surprisingly well if you can find good quality rubber. Amazingly, the FS1 e was so popular that Yamaha sold 200,000 of the bikes in the UK alone. On the road, the bike was incredibly narrow. It almost feels as though you're sitting on some sort of push bike, but this is no push bike. This is a real motorcycle in a tiny form. The Kreidler Mustang Founded in Stuttgart, Kreidler was an old German industrial company specialising in metal wire. From 1951 they began building motorcycles. So successful were they that by 1959 one third of all motorcycles in Germany were Kreidlers. Kreidler had considerable success 
in the early 70s in motorcycle racing, particularly lightweights, and this spurred them on to produce a range of sporty mopeds to cash in on their Grand Prix success. Like their Zundup counterparts, Prada were well-made motorcycles that enjoyed a strong following, especially in Europe and Holland in particular, the Eccle two-stroke single was employed across most of Kreidler's range. There was even a 125 version too. Unlike the Zundup, it was horizontally mounted and very much reminds me of Pucci's engine of the same period. Unfortunately, the Kreidler story would very much mirror that of rival Zundup, both companies going bankrupt in 1982. Although the Kreidler name itself is still in use today for a range of bicycles and quad bikes. Suzuki AP50 The Suzuki AP50 was Suzuki's answer of course to the FS1E and is in many ways quite a similar machine. Basic equipment and construction is very similar. They're both two-stroke single cylinders with auto lube. The Suzuki has surprisingly good mid-range power for such a tiny engine. An AP50 is actually the machine that I learned to ride on. I purchased one for the princely sum of £15 in 1982 and absolutely destroyed the poor thing on fields. If only I'd known the value the bikes are going to gather a few years later. Although it was the main competitor for the FS1E, the Suzuki was never quite as popular and didn't sell in quite the same numbers. As a result, there are fewer survivors and therefore it's more of a rarity. So although it's slightly less desirable than the FS1E, its rarity means that values are about the same, somewhere between the five and 10,000 pounds mark for one in good condition which I think is an absolutely amazing sum for such a tiny bike. As with the Yamaha, the Suzuki was available with pedals early on, but later dropped them when these were not obliged to be used by law. The Suzuki used a drum brake throughout its life. Unfortunately, there are fewer aftermarket parts available for the Suzuki than there are for the Yamaha, being slightly less popular. So you'll find it hard to find pieces that will actually give you extra power. But if you're one of those people that really likes to stand out from the crowd, don't buy a fizzy, buy the AP. It's just that little bit different, that little bit more unusual. The Honda SS50. Honda's SS50 differs from the rest of the bikes here because of course it uses a four stroke engine, all the others using two stroke screamers. Obviously this does mean it doesn't possess the same power. But it does of course have much better fuel economy and it's quieter and that bit more civilised. And of course it also has the longer history, being first introduced as an overhead valve model in 1961, then known as the Type C110 and the C111. In the late 60s came the overhead cam engine, but the bike was of course still very much Honda Super Cub based, so performance was comparatively modest. To help it compete in the UK moped market, obviously pedals needed to be added, but also it was given a fifth gear and the engine was given a mild tune to increase performance. But top speed and acceleration lagged some way behind the two-stroke opposition. However, the 1977 UK law change would in many ways favour Honda. It meant they could delete those pedals and their four-stroke engine was of course now much more competitive that all machines were restricted to 30 miles an hour. Although never as exciting as its two-stroke opposition, the Honda nevertheless provided good, economical and above all reliable transport with a little bit of style. Hope you enjoyed that collection of five super 70s mopeds. What other quirky collections of bikes would you like to hear about? Drop us a line below and, and let us know what you think. Hope you enjoyed that video if you did. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.